Good day class. You are welcome back to the physics class. So today we will continue from where we stopped in our previous video, which is reflection of light on a curved surface. So last time we were talking about reflection of light on a curved surface, and we stopped at formation of images by a curved surface. So today we are going to continue from there by starting with formation of images by a convex word mirror. So going back to what we have learned about formation of images on a convex word mirror. Now, talking about the natural size and the position of image that is formed by a convex mirror, it is constant. The properties of image is what constant. The properties of image is what constant, irrespective of where the position of the object is in front of the mirror. So, in doing that, we are going to first of all talk about the roots of the ray diagrams that we use in forming images on a convex word mirror. Now, the roots are one. Remember what we have yesterday? G bar mirror. But you know that for a convex mirror, for a convex mirror, it is pointed inside. That's it. So, we are, and remember that I told you something about having a virtual but principal focus. So, it is located behind the mirror itself. So, assuming we have an object in front of the mirror, the rays that we have, first of all, is the one that is parallel to the principal axis. And the one that passes parallel to the principal axis has to now do what? Pass through the principal axis, principal focus after reflection. But due to the fact that this has uh, a virtual focus, so we are going to use the lamp to denote it. So, meaning that it will happen to do what? Diverge in this way because we say that a convex mirror can also be called a diverging mirror. Also, the second ray is the one that passes or moves towards the radius of the center of curvature, the center of what curvature. So, if we have it, that is what we suppose that. But then, because of the fact that this actually moves behind. So we are going to have those ones behind using the dead line. Why are the one in front is doing what? Now, when we look at this, you notice that these two rays are, are enough to draw a to form an image. I remember what we said yesterday that when a ray moves from the head, moving towards from the head of the object, moving towards the center of curvature, what happens? It will move, and the next thing is that it will now go back in the same word, direction. So, this is what we have. Now, from here, you see that the, the only place the two rays intersect after reflection is at this point. Can I see that? So, what we have here is a very small image which is smaller than the object I was given. So, from there, we can talk about the properties of the image. But I want to say something before we talk about this. Now, you, you have to know that irrespective of the position of this object in front of the mirror, the properties which we are going to obtain will remain the same. Remember that whenever we talk about properties, we are talking about the nature of the image formed, the size of the image formed, and the position of the image formed. Now, the properties of the image that is formed, so talking about the image, the properties starting from the nature. Now, looking at this, remember that when we talk about nature, we talk about two things. One is whether the image is upright and what inverted, or it is real and inverted. So these are two different properties of image that could be formed. Now, I want to also make clear, make it clear right now, that the kind of image, whenever image is virtual. It will always be what? Erect. Whenever image is virtual, it will always be what? Erect. Just like the property of image that is formed on a plane mirror. Remember that we have.
have a real Im a, a virtual image and also what a red image or authorized what image. Now, but whenever image is real, it will always be what inverted. Whenever image is real, it will always be what inverted. So in this case now, when you look at this image that is found here, you notice that this image is what is upright. Is what upright or erect. So it is erect and it is also virtual. So just like I said, it is erect and it is also what virtual dimension. Then talking about the size, the size of this image. If you look at the size of the object and compare it with the size of the image, you see that image is smaller than the what object. So we say that this the size is what diminished. Reason why we say diminished is that is because it's smaller than the what object. It's smaller than the object. Then talking about the position. Now the position, we just say that it is behind the mirror. It is behind the what mirror. It is behind the mirror. So, you can pause and take note of the properties of image that is formed by the complex words mirror. Alright, why? And the next thing we are going to talk about is the mirror formula. The mirror formula. Now, there, are, there is this particular experiment which we are supposed to treat in the lab. And that experiment is, is how to obtain the focal length of what? Of a given mirror, which I mean called mirror. Now, there are many ways. One of the ways to determine it is by using the mirror formula or mirror equation. Now, from theory and geometry, it's been obtained that the relationship between the object distance image distance and the focal length of a mirror, curved mirror precisely, whether convex or concave mirror, is given as 1 over L equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. Where L here is the length, focal length and U here is the object distance and V is the image distance. F is the focal length U is the object distance and V is the what? Image distance. Now, if we know the image distance and we know the if we know the object distance and we know the image distance, we can easily find the what? The focal length of a given mirror. That's called mirror. So it is very important that you must have to know this relationship so that it will help you, it's going to help us in solving some practical problems on what is called mirror. And there are other similar equations which we can obtain from this given equation here. And those are obtained based on making either F the subject of formula or U the subject of formula as, as the case may be. Now, another thing that we apply or we use, or formula we use in uh, form mirror is what we call magnification. As a matter of fact, magnification is used for any kind of word mirror. Now, magnification, if you recall, is the first thing. Then the second thing is magnification, M. Magnification is given as the image distance divided by object distance. So we regard this as first equation and this as the second equation. But remember that the precisely we call this first one the what? The mirror formula. We call it the mirror what? formula. But these two can always be applied in solving practical problems in what computers. Now, having done this, we will now go into solving some practical problems under the curved what mirrors. Okay? Practical problems. solve some practical problems on that mirrors, we need to look at what we call sign convention. 
Find conversion. Now, the sign conventions we use in mirrors, there are two types. That is what we call real is positive sign convention. Real is positive sign convention. And the other is called the new Cartesian sign convention. So the first one is real is positive. The second one is new Cartesian sign convention. But in order to make things easier, we are going to take just only one so that you will not have a lot of confusion in using them. Nobody will ask you to solve problems using any particular one. So it depends on the one you find to the right. So we are going to take only one, which is real is what? Positive. Real is positive. Now, talking about real is positive sign convention. We are going to talk about the rules of real is positive sign convention. And the rules in, in the, the rules are one that real objects and real images are taken to be at positive distance from the mirror. I will take it again. Real objects and real images are taken to be at positive distance from the mirror. So it means that whenever you have a real image or real object, you will take it to be what? Positive. Secondly, virtual images are taken to be negative distance from the mirror. I will take it again. Virtual images are taken to be at negative distance from the mirror. So if you have a virtual image, it means that you are going to give it a sign convention of what? Negative or minus. Thirdly, the focal length of a concave mirror is positive. I will take it again. The focal length of a concave mirror is positive. Remember that a concave mirror is the same thing as what? Is the same thing as what? Converging mirror. So the focal length of a concave mirror or a converging mirror is taken to be positive. Now, the last one is that the focal length of a convex mirror or a diverging mirror is taken to be what? Negative. The focal length of the convex mirror or the diverging mirror is taken to be negative. These four rules are the rules of real is positive sign convention. You have to take note of them because they are very, very important in solving problems under curved mirrors. So we can now go into taking problems under curved mirrors. So practical problems. Alright, so let's have a question solved. We have an object is placed 30 cm in front of a concave mirror of radius of curvature 40 cm. Then we ask to determine the following. In solving this problem, first of all, we will still have to recall the mirror formula we have registered initially, which says that 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v. That is the mirror formula we stated initially. But here, we are trying to see if we can determine the image distance, which is what? v. In this case, we don't have f, but we have u, and we are looking for v. But let us first of all write out the things we have available. So we have that r, which is the radius of what? Curvature is what? 40 cm. Followed by the object distance, which is what? 30 cm. Now, but we know that there is a relationship between the radius of curvature and what? The focal length. So, and remember that you have to be very conscious about the kind of what? Mirror. Because from our sign convention, 
we have to apply it in solving this problem. From a science convention, we say that concave mirrors are taken to have a positive or focal length, right? So in doing that, let us recall the relationship between F and R. We say that F is equal to R over 2. So meaning that our focal length is equal to half of the radius of our curvature. Now, in doing that, it means that our F is positive 40 over 2. Positive because it's a concave or mirror. So when we divide that, we're going to have what? Positive 20 centimeters. Alright, so having obtained that, we can easily now substitute into the mirror formula to find the value of what? Image distance. So substitute into that, we have that 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over u, which we already have u as what? 30. Then plus 1 over v. Now, to solve this, we can make 1 over v the surface of formula first. So when we do that, we can take 1 over 20 and 1 over 30 comes to the left hand side. We have minus 1 over 30 and this is equal to 1 over v. Then the LCM of 30 and 20 is equal to 60. So we have 1 over 20 minus 1 over 30 is equal to 1 over v. Then LCM is what? 60. So 60 divided by 20, we have 3 times 1, 3. Minus 60 divided by 30, we have 2 times 1, 2. So we have this to be equal to 1 over v. So 1 over 60 is equal to 1 over v. So this now implies that our v is equal to 60 centimeters. Our v is equal to 60 centimeters. Therefore, we say that the image distance is 60 centimeters placed in front of the wall of the mirror. It is 60 centimeters located in front of the mirror. So we are done with obtaining the image distance. The next thing we are going to determine is the magnification of this object. We want to know how much the object is magnified. Alright, so we are going to wipe off this. We have gotten the first thing, so let's go to the next thing. <coughs> so the next thing we have is our magnification. We recall that magnification is equal to image distance over object distance. So the image distance which we obtain already is 60 centimeters. I want to say something concerning this image distance. If you look at the value we obtain, it is a positive word, value, meaning that this particular image is what? Real. The image is what? Real. Alright, so divided by 30 cm, which is what? Which is the object distance. So the magnification is now equal to 2, 2. Please, you have to know that magnification does not have any what? Unit of measurement. It doesn't have any unit. So the magnification is 2. So this simply means that the image distance, or rather, the size of the image is 2 times the size of the what? Objects. The size of the image is 2 times the size of the what? Object. That means the object is magnified times 2 of what is the image is. Alright, M is equal to 2. So that is our magnification. So the third thing we are going to find here is we are asked to illustrate this using a diagram and precisely the ray diagram. So we first of all remember what I told you about drawing uh, the ray diagram. So first thing you do is to draw your principal axis and after which you locate the points and the point you are talking about is the, the pole, the principal focus and the radius of curvature. And if you want to get an accurate diagram, you have to use your measurements. Use your ruler to make a straight line. You can just mark a point and call it a pole. Measure any, any, any distance, it can be 2 cm or 3 cm. But make sure that if you locate here as P, that here will be F, then the next one will be C, such that 